Hello, welcome back to Data Leaps. Today we're recreating a live webinar that me and my coworker Danny did yesterday called Data and AI Decoded. We wanted to do a Data and AI 101 session for people who want to break into the industry, outlining what is data and AI, what skills are needed, what roles there are, as well as how to get into the industry. We had some technical challenges yesterday with the webinar. About two thirds of the way through, we had to switch platform, which means some of the attendees could not join the second platform after we switched. That also means we couldn't download the whole recording from the webinar in one piece, which is why I'm doing a recreation of the webinar. Hope you enjoy the recording. So this webinar was done yesterday by Danny and I. Danny unfortunately cannot join us for the recreation of this webinar, but this is who Danny is. He broke into data about two years ago, and he's a great content creator on social media about personal development. If you want to hear more from Danny, Please follow him on social media. And also we're planning a Ask Me Anything session in a few weeks time. You can join us then to hear from Danny. And this is who I am. I spent about 10 years in the university doing one bachelor degree in business and three different master degrees in all things that's not technical, not data related. And then I spent the last 10 and a half years working. First two and a half years was in supply chain. Absolutely hated it. So I then learned how to code myself and pivoted into data about eight years ago. Ever since then, I've been a consultant, head of data, and I've been a solution architect with Microsoft and today Databricks. Since my Microsoft days, I have been coaching young graduates to pivot into data from a non-technical background and today more people want me to coach them than I have time for because I have a full-time job. I also do a lot of public speaking. I do a lot of content creation on YouTube as well as LinkedIn and other platforms. So I really don't have time to coach everybody that want me to coach them which is why I am teaming up with Danny to do this webinar and also put together a Discord community so you guys can join and we can help you in a scalable way. And you can also help each other in terms of finding a study buddy or sharing learning resources and so on and so forth. Without further ado, let's get into the webinar. So first, we're going to cover what is data and AI, and then we're going to go through why business actually need data and AI. And then we'll talk about what do people actually do in this industry and what roles exist in this industry. And this is really important if you want to break into data and AI. These will help you identify what kind of roles you actually want to work towards in the industry. And then we'll talk about essential skills needed to work in this industry, as well as how to figure out whether you are a good fit or not to work in this industry. And then we'll talk about how to actually get into data and AI. So first, what is data? When we run the live webinar, a lot of people think data is numbers, is analytics, is 10101. All of these are true, but data is much more than that. Data is actually everywhere, in every business, in everyone's life. For instance, in financial industry, your credit history is data, your bank statement is data, the stock prices is data. In manufacturing, the signals that different systems send to each other is data, as well as the inventory count, as well as the status of different machines and components are all data. Retail as well. Uh, on-shelf availability is data and how much grade, meaning how much stock is getting stolen from every retail store is data. Education as well. If you're a student, your grades in GCSE is data and different curriculum in different courses is data. So a lot of times when people think data, they think numbers. 
and data is actually much more than numbers. Data has different shapes and forms. The most common one people think about is tables. Think Excel. Excel has columns and rows, and these are how you store structured data. And that means, for instance, if you have student exam results, different students' names is stored in a column, and how they did in different exams are stored as uh, rows. But data is much more than just tables. Actually, majority of the data in the world are not in tables. There are text files, there are PDFs, there are images, there are the TikTok videos and the YouTube videos you watch, as well as audio files. And these make up majority of the data in the world today. The tables are called structured data and the, the text images, videos and audios are called unstructured data. Now, what do we do this, with this data? We need data platform to actually process these data into useful insights. The TikTok videos, the PDFs, the signals from manufacturing machines, your credit card uh, purchase from post machines, all of these are data sources. Think of these as cocoa forests around the world. So you would have a cocoa forest in Madagascar or Philippines and all different sources, and they need to be shipped to data platform. And think of this as a chocolate factory. They need to be cleaned, they need to be roasted, they need to be transformed into different chocolate products that to be sold in the market. And this is what a data product do, is to take raw data that the world generates um, either from your phone, from a machine, from a uh, fitness tracker, from a uh, bank system, all of these are collected into the data platform, getting processed and um, getting transformed, and they then get turned into data products or data insights that's shared with the end consumers. Think of another example as Lego blocks. Uh, so data sources are like unsorted Lego blocks and they are messy, they are mixed together, and they get shipped into the data platform to get processed. And they will be cleaned, as sorted, and categorized into different categories and mapped together. And then when it turns into a data product, it might get turned into a Lego house so the end consumer can understand what this data is trying to say. And then what is AI? AI is actually artificial intelligence. And what it is, is a subcategory of computer science that's tried to emulate or surpass the human level of intelligence. But there are other concepts within AI that we use in data quite frequently. For instance, machine learning. Machine learning is a subcategory of AI that is trying to understand the pattern of existing data and they then make predictions without explicitly programming it. And then within machine learning, there is a subcategory called deep learning. Deep learning specifically uses artificial neural networks, and these are the neural networks that mimics the human neural networks, the synapse within our brain to actually learn from the patterns of the data. Within deep learning, this is very, very uh, popular these days. We got generative AI. This is using the deep learning models to actually generate content, whether that's text or image or audios or videos or synthetic data. And the one that we're most familiar with, ChatGPT, is a type of generative AI model it's called large language model that's specifically generating text and code. So why do businesses actually need data and AI? At the end of the day, business need to know how they're doing and how they need to react 
to the world. And this is why they need to look at the reality of their business. They need to do some descriptive analysis to understand what's happening with their business. They might want to also do some diagnostic analysis to understand if something went wrong, what actually went wrong. And then they might want to do some prescription descriptive analysis, which help them determine what's the next best action to take, or some predictive analysis trying to un understand what's going to happen next, so they can make the best decision to respond accordingly. The descriptive and diagnostic analysis help business to look backwards on what has happened, whereas the prescriptive and predictive Predictive analysis help business to look forward on what will happen. Combining these analysis, business can actually improve customer engagement. They can increase revenue, decrease cost and potential risks, and also improve operational efficiency. This is super important because collectively, these are helping business to gain competitive advantage in the industry. Now, what do people do in data and AI? Different roles and different people do different things in data and AI. All in all, they all do one thing. They solve real world problems using data and AI. To give you a few examples, what are real world problems data and AI is solving today? There are uh, companies that's building airplane engines and they're using data and AI to build predictive maintenance models and try to predict when a certain plane engine need to be serviced before the plane engine actually breaks down. And companies like Microsoft is actually using artificial intelligence to protect wildlife in Arctic Circle. So these are the real world problems that companies are using today to solve using data and AI. And you can also help solving real world problems using data and AI. So what do actually people do to use the chocolate factory example? You have the kind of people that identify and create the data at source. So they talk to the business stakeholders, they understand the problem they try to solve, and then go find the data at source. For instance, if you're trying to understand your health status, they, these people might try to find the data in your fitness tracker. They might find the data from your health insurers. They might find the data in NHS that reflects your health status. And if there's no data that's currently available, they might try to create some data. So these are the people that start collecting data creating systems that will collect data to actually build the insight the business stakeholders want to build. And this is super important because they go around the world to source and find the cocoa forests that will be used as raw material for the chocolate factory. And then there's a certain roles, their tasks is to ingest the data. These cocoa fruits need to be ingested into the chocolate factory so they can be processed. So these are the people that makes the trucks moving at a schedule or continuously making sure nothing is broken down, making sure that the chocolate factory always have sufficient raw material to work with. And then there's some people's job is to do quality control. You will have good cocoa fruits and bad cocoa fruits coming in from all over the world. So you want to find some outliers, find some anomalies and weed out the bad fruits. So you don't want to create chocolate based on bad fruits. This is why you need this step to do quality control. And then after you identified what fruits are good, what fruits are bad, you might actually do some cleaning, making sure only the good fruits are coming through and the bad fruits are either getting quarantined somewhere in a different pot or getting eliminated in your production line. 
and transform the data. So in this analogy, these people actually transformed uh, the roasted chocolate beans maybe into chocolate syrup or chocolate bars, chocolate ice cream, chocolate powder. They basically transform the chocolate into a different form that's easier for the end consumer to use and then enrich the data. So these are the kind of people that make sure that different sources are infused together. So you would have, for instance, um, chocolate infused with raspberries or chocolate infused with pistachio or hazelnut. These people make sure that data from different sources are actually matched together. If you're a business, you might have different systems, your financial system, your customer management system. So these systems will generate different records about the same customer. And you might want to join these records together to have a holistic and comprehensive view about certain customer. And this is what enrich means is to merge different data from different sources together so you can tell a more comprehensive story about certain entity. There are people who's actually building machine learning models and what they actually do is they predict what's going to happen. So they could be predicting the weather for the next few months. If it's hot, then the chocolate factory will make more ice cream. If it's cold, then the chocolate factory might want to use some more uh, hot chocolate for the consumers to use. When it comes to actually consumers using the data product, there's people whose job is to visualize the data. So they do the very important step of storytelling with the data. They'll build visualizations, dashboards, reports using the data. Again, coming from what the business stakeholders requirement is, they've done the cleansing, the collection, the transformation, and this is the final product of um, what your data is going to serve back to the business. And then you have um, people who are deploying machine learning models. So people who build machine learning models will make predictions, but you also need to make sure the machine learning models are deployed to a production um, environment so people can use it. And these environments are actually stable. They're not broken down easily and you can actually monitor what's happening all the time. There will be people who are using the machine learning models. If machine learning model is a mold, the uh, builder of the machine learning models actually build the mold and the deployment of the machine learning models take the mold and make it available for everybody. The users of the machine learning models take the mold and produce more product in the shape of the mold. There's people whose job is to design the platform and they make sure that everything works smoothly. So the truck works from the cocoa forest to the chocolate constantly. Nothing is broken down in the production pipeline of the chocolate factory and the uh, distribution from the factory to the stores works smoothly. These people understand how each step works and how each steps are stitched together. Then you have people who are governing the data. So if you have a chocolate factory, you don't want everybody and anyone just walk around in the factory floor and tasting everything. So what happens is you need someone who's governing the data and making sure that the right people has the right access to the right floors or the right zones and not everything is accessible to everybody all the time. So what roles actually exist in data and AI? So again, to take the tasks and we're gonna break it down. As a data analyst, depending on what kind of analyst you are, uh, you could be identifying and creating the data sources and you could be visualizing the data. And a lot of times you'll be consuming the machine learning models using the, the model that's built 
by uh, the data scientists and make predictions yourself as well. As a data engineer, you do the ingestion from the cocoa forest to the factory. You make sure that truck is operating smoothly and automatically. You will do the quality control of data, finding outliers and anomalies and eliminate them by cleaning the data. You also do transformation and enrichment of the data. So um, you transform the roasted cocoa beans into the uh, shape of the chocolate product you need. Might be a chocolate bar, might be chocolate syrup, and you also enrich it with whatever flavor is required by the business. Some of the data engineers also consume machine learning models. They could build a production pipeline and then a step we're seeing the data pipeline is actually to make a prediction um, using the data that's coming through that pipeline. Data scientists, they their main job is to build machine learning models, but they also, before building that model, they need to find the anomalies and outliers, find the patterns of the data. They need to clean the data properly, making sure that the data that goes into the machine learning model is actually clean and usable. And then you have the solution architect. Again, solution architect's job is to understand the different features, different systems, what do they do and how they all fit together and design the platform end to end. There's a bit of a shift in the AI engineer role recently. So prior to Gen AI, what AI engineers do is to um, deploy actually um, AI applications like voice recognition or video indexing or image tagging. Um, a lot of it is very, very similar to what a machine learning engineer does, except machine learning engineer deploy traditional machine learning models, whereas AI engineer deploy like AI applications. But with the introduction of generative AI, a lot of the job application these days, when they put out AI engineer, they actually mean the generative AI engineers. So they build uh, generative AI architectures like, like uh, prompt engineering, like RAG. So these actually uh, job description of AI engineers shift towards generative AI quite drastically recently. And then you have data modelers. Data modelers are really, really important role to make sure that the data is infused and enriched uh, in a, the right way. They understand what data is coming from what part of the business and from what systems and how they all relate it to each other and understand what is the best data model to be used um, for the business. So they work very, very closely with the data engineers and build the most uh, efficient data model possible. The machine learning engineers, we mentioned it uh, briefly when we we're talking about AI engineers, basically machine learning engineers take the model that data scientists build and then deploy it, uh, make it available for everybody to use. They also make sure that the model they deployed is stable and um, monitor the model performance as required. And then you have data stewards. Their job is to make sure that the data is governed properly, the data is accessed um, by the right people. They make sure the access control and the security is set up and, and there's basically security guards for the chocolate factory. So how easy it is to get into these roles. The easiest role to get started is probably data analysts. You will need some domain knowledge because you need to talk to business stakeholders, understand the business challenges. You might need to go and find data sources from different systems, but you don't need a lot of coding. Some business analysts get started without any kind of coding. They just do the front-end visualization um, of Power BI, Tableau. But if you want to be a good business analyst, you definitely need a sufficient amount of SQL. But to get started, SQL is probably the easiest programming language to start with. 
And then data steward. Again, you need some level of business domain knowledge because you need to understand not just the business requirement, but also the industry requirement and the regulatory requirement. But you don't need too much coding to do this role. And you just need to work with different departments of the business, legal, uh, potentially regulators to, to make sure that you set up the right security policies for your data. And then you have data engineers. The engineers don't necessarily need to have a lot of domain knowledge. They work with data analysts and data modelers who have more business domain knowledge. They need to be more proficient in coding as well as system design because they need to take that production pipeline and make it automatic, reliable, and resilient. So it's really, really important for the data engineers because they are in charge of building that chocolate production line. And data scientist is almost the flip side of the engineer because they need a lot of the business domain knowledge and not necessarily a lot of the system uh, knowledge. So what they do is they build machine learning models and a lot of the machine learning models, depending on in the industry you're working in, will need like speciality knowledge. For instance, if you're building flaw detection models for credit card companies, you actually need to know what are the deciding factors for fraud. And same with if you're predicting someone's risk for a heart failure, you actually need to know a certain knowledge about healthcare before you can build that model. Machine learning engineers are the ones that take this model that's built by data scientists and then deploy it to a production environment. So they don't need a lot of the domain knowledge, but they need a similar level of system design and platform knowledge as the data engineers, because they also need to make sure the model is working um, in the production environment. Then you have the AI engineers. They're a step further than the machine learning engineers. Not only do they need to have the system design knowledge, the coding knowledge, but also they need to know a lot about the domain as well, because they're typically building domain specific applications. Data modelers, again, they're working with the business, understanding what different data are getting generated and how they can all be infused together and what data model is needed to serve the business needs in the best way. So they're working with the business a lot and they need quite a lot of business knowledge, but you don't need as much system design or coding as like a data engineer or a engineer. Data consultant is a special role because basically you can be a data engineer and uh, working as a consultant. You can be an ML engineer working as a consultant. You can be a data scientist working as a consultant. Data consultant is working for a consultancy and as a consultant, they work for clients and build machine learning models for them or build data pipelines for them. So they are a external resource for the customers and they work as a specific function. This is why they're bent on in the middle, depending on you know what role you have as a data consultant. It can be easier to get started if you're a data analyst working as a consultant and harder to get started if you're an AI engineer working as a consultant. And then you have solution architect. A solution architect typically it's not a starter role. You will need to typically have worked in the industry for a number of years, understanding how different roles work, what are the challenges. You have to have seen things as a uh, solution architect before you do this job. Microsoft run a graduate program for solution architect, and I see a lot of people in that program struggle with imposter syndrome, with self-confidence, because they haven't built a pipeline in production. They haven't deployed a model in production. They don't know what challenges the customers face when you're a fresh graduate working as a solution architect and you're working with a customer that's been building data pipelines for 15 years. It's actually 
quite intimidating for you to tell them what are the best practices and this is what you're doing wrong and so on and so forth. So my advice is if you want to be a solution architect, you would want to start elsewhere, be a data scientist, be an engineer, build something, fail something, see how things can go wrong and then work towards being a solution architect. Engineer is a very, very special role. There's only a few companies in the world that are building actual AI models. The likes of Microsoft AI, the likes of Google DeepMind, the likes of uh, Meta, Llama, Teams, uh, Mistral. So what you need to do is you need to have a PhD in a related field to actually become a AI researcher. So these are very, very niche. If you're just breaking into data and AI, this is not probably the role for you. Essential skills. So if you're already working, there could be a lot of soft skills that you can leverage already as a data person. So first, communication is important. Not only you need to work with the business, you also work, need to work with each other. If you're the engineer, you need to work closely with data analysts. You need to work closely with data stewards. You need to work closely with the data modelers. Communication is so very, very important. There's a lot of influencing without authority within the data world. Critical thinking thinking about is this the right way to solve a problem there could be different tools you can use to solve this problem there could be different libraries you can use to to solve this problem and is this the right thing to do and then how to do it critical thinking is super super important in uh, in this industry and then problem solving not everything's written down everywhere there might be somebody that's written a book about the subject you're learning, and there might be somebody that's written a blog about it on the internet. But sometimes it takes a lot of trial and error, then figure out how to actually solve the problem at hand. Researching skills. This is the ability to Google, the ability to do stack overflow, the ability to actually go and ask questions in community sites, different forums in, on Reddit, is try to understand, has other people encountered the same problem you have encountered if there's an answer to your question online? And you might have to do some testing yourself, do a spike, just try to figure out, can certain things be solved in an experimental way? The ability to ask the right questions. You can only get to the answer you want to get to if you're asking the right question. For data, the most important thing is to find the right problem to solve and to find the right question to ask. And the ability to see the bigger picture. It's really important not to get pigeonholed into the problem at hand. Sometimes it's important to take a step back and go, can I solve this in a different way using a different tool? Is this the right uh, team to talk to? Can we do things differently? You know, what problem is doing this actually solving? Is it worth doing it in the first place? Again, looking at the bigger picture will help you uh, solve your problem more efficiently. In terms of hard skills, you can't do this job without programming. Maybe as a data steward or as an entry level data analyst, you can get away with programming without SQL, but you would want to learn some coding um, if you want to progress with your career in this industry. The most popular coding language in data and AI is probably uh, Python, SQL, Scala, and R. You want to have some design skills as well. The data analysts have to design the dashboard and visualizations to their building, and the data engineers have to design the pipeline they're building. The solution architects have to design the system that they are building. So you need to think about how everything fit together. Again, think the big picture, not just a single visualization, but how does the canvas look? Not just a single component, but how does the entire platform fit together.
statistics. A lot of people think in order to work in data and AI, you need statistics. You only need statistics if you are a data scientist. If you are a data engineer, you don't need to know statistics to actually work in this field. How do you know if you're a good fit to work in data and AI? So first, you need to be curious. This world is evolving all the time. If you're standing still and not learning, you will be falling behind. So you need, be, you need to be very, very curious about how everything works and be constantly learning to keep up. The second thing is you actually need to like solving problems, not just solving real world problems using data, but something can be broken. Your dashboard can be broken. Your pipeline can be broken. You actually need to enjoy fixing broken things to actually work in this industry. You need to be a self-starter. A lot of times your business stakeholders will tell you this is what they need. They won't necessarily tell you how to do certain things, like deliver the letter, and they won't necessarily tell you how this letter needs to be delivered delivered. You just need to figure it out, which means you need to be a self-starter, take initiatives and get things done. Action-driven and business-orientated. This is important because if you're doing a project, if you're building a pipeline, building a machine learning model, that's not solving a problem for your business or for your company. This is not worth doing. Typically, you'll only get budget from the business to do certain things if it's driving certain value. So value is always going to be your starting point when you're asking budget to do certain projects, which means the end result of your project should be delivering value for the business. You need to be resourceful. You need to know where to research. You need to know who to ask questions from. You need to know where to get help. And being resourceful is actually a very important trait for a uh, data and AI person. Persistent, especially if you come from a non-technical background. If you want to get into data and AI, you're going to get a lot of no's. I got 20, 30, 50 no's when I was pivoting from supply chain to data. And that's okay. You don't get disheartened by the no's. All you need is one yes. If someone says yes to you, you get into the industry. And from there, it's a lot easier to progress. You just need to open the door first. How many times you need to knock doesn't matter. So you need to be persistent and keep working towards it. You'll get there one day. Everybody I ever coached got into data eventually. So you can do it too. Now, how to do it? So first... You need to analyze yourself, think about what strengths you have, what interested area you have, what domain knowledge you already have, and also why you want to do this, right? So if you want to get into data and AI, because AI engineer is probably the sexiest job ad out there, you won't last long because this is actually hard work. So in order to put in the hard work, you want to actually be generally interested in the area to, to put in the work and add time and effort to work towards it. Second is identify your target. We worked through a lot of roles in this presentation. Think about what roles, uh, what these different roles do and what fits your aspirations better. Identify what your target is, and then find the learning resources to do it. A lot of people ask me, how do I get started? How do I get in? Without knowing who you want to be, I can send you hundreds of links of learning resources. It's not going to help you because you're not going to go through hundreds and hundreds of learning resources. You need to tell me what you want to be, an analyst, data scientist, then we can share learning resources with you accordingly. And this is why we want you to sign up to the Discord community, which I will put in the description of this video. So we'll share learning resources with you and you can share learning resources with each other. 
form a learning plan. This is super important. Now if you have the learning resources, depending on how much time you can put in to work towards a career in data and AI outside your school days, outside your, your day job, you actually need a plan to have it as a time box. The exercise is really important because you don't want to, like in five years time, still work towards getting into data and AI. Now, stand out in job search is really hard, especially if you come from a non-technical background, but we'll put out some tips and tricks in terms of how to do your CV and other material you can put together to stand out in the job search. Excel at interviews. You want to practice. There's a lot of interview questions that are available in sites like Glassdoor. So you want to find an interview body and do practice interviews. Um, we'll put out some interview tips as we go forward to progress continuously once you get into data and AI. This is a ever-changing world. This is why you don't want to stop once you get into this industry. Your target might be going to be an AI engineer straight away, or you could have a multi-step target to say, I want to get into the industry as an analyst, but then I want to move on to be a data engineer. And I have a multi-year plan to train myself and to learn and then to work towards that multi-year plan. So what have we covered today? We covered what is data and AI and why business actually needs data and AI, what roles exist, what are the essential skills needed, and how to determine whether you're a good fit or not for data and AI. And then we shared a learning plan to get into the industry. In terms of next steps, the first step is to analyze yourself. Think about your strengths, your interests, your domain knowledge, Join the Discord community so you can be part of this journey with us. We'll help you as much as we can. And you can also help each other. And then if you originally signed up to this webinar, you would have uh, received a feedback form. Please fill out that feedback form because Danny and I will pick three people at random and do a 30 minutes coaching session with each of these three people. Thank you for watching Data Leaps. If you think the content is useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it.